want to learn how to escape your 9 to 5 job. Today, I'll be sharing with all of you whether or not you should leave your 9 to 5 job and how we can all pursue financial freedom. Hello everyone, welcome to the Nasty Dynasty where we all learn about life-changing habits, mindsets and skill sets to help us to be more Today, I'll be covering three main steps on how to escape our 9 to 5 to pursue financial freedom as well as some tips and tricks on how to kickstart our business. The information that I'll be sharing are all insights and reflections on the book Cashflow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. I hope that through this video, I'll be able to convey the key ideas of this beautiful book. The first step will be to understand main people in the financial world that we live in today. The quadrants are E for employees, S for self-employed, B for business owners, and I for investors. The left side of the quadrant are mostly people that work for money, while the right side of the quadrant are people that have money work for them. Okay, so let me just ask you this very very simple question. If I flip a coin and it lands on heads, you will lose $50,000. But if it lands on tails, you will instantly win $500,000. You can only flip the coin once. Will you flip it? Your first instinctive answer of whether you are unwilling to lose the $50,000 or whether you are eager to win the $500,000 will show roughly where your mindset lies in the cash flow quadrant. Shifting quadrants is not a very easy task. Therefore, we need to first understand the pros and cons of each quadrant before deciding whether or not and how we can transition into them. Let's first talk about the E quadrant, also known as employees. E's will always have a stable job, which provides them with consistent income that increases along with their position as well as the duration that they spend in the company. E's make up a majority of our population because ever since we were young, we were taught to not take any risks and to just follow along everyone else. Your parents has definitely told you to study hard, get a degree, work in a very good company and slowly work your way up the corporate ladder in order to be successful. E's have a steady income stream as working for others is the only way that they are willing to earn money. E's are also usually happy with life as job security is sufficient for them and they will not indulge in anything that seems risky. However, E's lack financial education which will lead to mainly three outcomes that will bring stress and unhappiness. Let's just use a simple equation here. Less money to spend equals less happiness. For the first outcome, E's are unable to differentiate between assets and liabilities which causes them to unknowingly get into an unnecessary debt reducing the amount of money they can use on expenses. For the second outcome, E's only have one source of income because they do not acquire assets to generate additional passive income. As their income increases, the amount they are taxed increases even more exponentially, automatically increasing their expenses by a large extent. For the third outcome, E's will not be able to differentiate good and bad deals as they do not have experience in or knowledge of the game where B's and I's play the game of money. As such, they will make poor lifelong decisions that they deem as not risky, not knowing that they just made the most risky decision of their lives. Basically, E's cannot differentiate the difference between risks and risky. You will often hear E's saying that investing is extremely risky. However, what they don't know is that being financially uneducated is what's most risky. As such, E's completely ignore any risky ways that can possibly change their life for the better. Now, let's move on to the S quadrant, also known as self-employed. Assets prioritize their freedom and improving their skills and level of expertise more than money. They strongly believe in the concept of working for money because the amount of effort that they put in is directly proportional to the amount of money that they earn. Assets are extremely proficient in the area of expertise because of both experience and interest. Hence, they can offer more specialized and detailed services which naturally earn them more income. Assets also have more freedom as they can choose when and where they want to work as they are not bounded by the company's rules but their own. However, it is extremely hard to succeed as an S and sometimes being successful can be worse than failing as they use up all their time to work even harder to maintain their success. Their business also cannot function without them as they do not create systems like bees but instead are part of the system. This is due to their belief that teaching others is a hassle and that doing everything by themselves is much more efficient. In summary, assets will endlessly be working for money and they will not pursue true financial freedom because they do not believe in expanding their business. Now, let's talk about B Quadrant, also known as business owners. Bs are clear about their goals of wanting to pursue financial freedom and what they need to do to achieve them. 
Bees aim to create business systems that can operate by themselves to generate even more money when they leave and come back after 5 years, allowing them to spend more time with their family and loved ones while others are working to make them rich. Bees are able to face their fears and seek opportunities within crisis while S's and E's are panicking. Take for example, during this COVID situation, while everyone was frantically queuing to purchase toilet papers, how much do you think the first person who sold masks online made every single hour? As a result, successful Bs will usually have higher income than S's and E's. However, Bs will face some, if not many failures during their journey towards financial freedom as it is extremely hard to succeed as a B. In fact, Kiyosaki mentions that 99 out of 100 small businesses ultimately disappear in 10 years. Bs will often face many negative feedback from the people around them, making the journey towards financial freedom very very difficult. This is because most of the people around us are either S's or E's. As a result, they try to convince Bs for their own good to give up and just pursue the E or S lifestyle. Despite knowing how difficult it is to be a B, Kiyosaki still recommends that all of us try to take a shot in succeeding to become a B. This is so that all of us can have a shot of escaping the rat race to do the things we want along with the people that we love. Now let's move on to I's, who are investors that search for Bs to invest in to grow their money. As such, Kiyosaki recommends to be a B before an I so that we know how companies work in general and we know which company we should invest in. I's usually do not work at all as they have the money work for them. I's also tend to have the most amount of assets that work to generate income for them. However, in order to be just an I, one needs to have a huge amount of initial capital in order to gain constant monthly passive income that can sustain their daily lives. An I also takes an extremely long time to develop as they require a lot of education and experience to acquire assets in many different markets. As such, an I understands how to properly risk mitigate such that they can profit regardless of the market's direction. Similar to Bs, Is also seek opportunities within crisis but in the world of investment. Since we have grasped the basic concepts of each quadrant, let me know in the comments below where do you think you lie and where do you want to be in in the next 5 years. Kiyosaki proposes that we start off as an E or an S before working our way up slowly to become a B followed by an I such that we properly understand how it feels like to be in the left side of the quadrant as well as the right side of the quadrant. Most people who are financially secure actually lie on both sides of the quadrant. For example, you can work as an engineer in the day but operate your very own e-commerce business chain at night. You can also be in possession of multiple properties as a form of investment. Now that we understand the basic characteristics of each quadrant, we can now talk about how we can properly transition into the quadrant that we desire. For today, we will mainly be talking about kickstarting our journey as a B rather than an I because I will be covering that in another video. The second step is extremely important and it is made out of this phrase, B, do, have. The easiest way to explain this phrase is to use three examples to show you how you have to first be before you do, then you can have. Let's use an example of our best friend, Ash, whose goal is to own and drive his very own Lamborghini. For the first example, Ash skips the step of be and do. He thinks to himself, well, one buy just buy only, free one, bodo. As such, Ash goes around borrowing money from all his friends as well as his life savings to pay the down payment for his Lamborghini. So let's just say that this car only has a down payment of 30% which makes up about $250,000 leaving him about $580,000 to pay off his car loan. Congrats Ash for achieving your dream so early on in life. Don't say I'm not brother ah. Let me just tell you how much you have to roughly spend every single month. So let's just say that getting a Lamborghini is God's plan. So he has 0% interest on his car loan. He plans to pay off his car loan just nice before the COE ends. After some Christmas. Ash needs to pay slightly less than 5k every single month for 10 years. Let's not even consider his car insurance, servicing, patrol and road tax. Basically, because Ash feels that his car is an asset rather than a liability and he did not do his planning beforehand, he has landed in this state. For the second example, Ash skips the step of B. Ash understands now that having a car is extremely expensive. After doing some calculations in his head, Ash realizes that the safest way is to save up way more than the down payment so that he can pay off his car loan and expenses in a sustainable manner. Ash decides that having $500,000 in his bank is the perfect plan. Let's say that Ash earns slightly more than the average Singaporean and that he has zero expenses and zero liabilities. 
Let's say that Ash starts off with a little bit of money in his bank. He still needs to save 100% of his income for 6 years before being able to afford the car. If you are Ash, can you even survive? Without being properly financially educated, the only do that E's and S's know is to save. Now let's move on to the third example where Ash does all three steps of be, do and have. Ash understands that in order to buy a Lamborghini, he has to first be rich. He then researches on how to improve his financial education. He then comes across the Nessie dynasty where he clicks the like button, subscribe to the channel and share the video with all his friends because don't say he's not brother. He then invests into his education to learn more about the B and the I quadrant while maintaining his 9 to 5 job as an E. As such, Ash understands the need to grow his asset column slowly such that his assets are able to generate sufficient income to purchase his first Lamborghini. By educating himself to having a rich mindset, Ash can then do the things that rich people do which allows him to have the things that rich people have. We have to always remember to first invest in our education such that we can take the correct steps to achieving our goals. Okay, okay, enough of understanding this and learning that. I know that all of you want the real deal. Let me explain to you the third step which is what you should do right now to escape your 9 to 5. The third step is to take the first baby step. Previously, I mentioned that most people start by slowly learning more about the right side of the quadrant before slowly transitioning into them while maintaining their primary income from the left side of the quadrant. This is so that they can maximize the level of security as well as reduce their risks. After investing in our education and knowing the basics of how to transition to the right side of the quadrant, we do not need to and definitely should not just go and take our entire life savings, throw it into a random business or random investment opportunity hoping that it will work. Money should not be something that can be thrown away so easily. Instead, we should first prioritize building our experience rather than pursuing instantly good results. For example, to transition into the I quadrant, we can first start by doing our fundamental analysis on some companies. Then, we can dollar cost average into those companies rather than throwing one times money into a random company that we never even do our research on. Another example will be to transition into the B quadrant. In order to ensure that we take a very small step, we have to first cut down on our costs. This can be done by either finding a business partner so that you completely cut your costs into half. Or, you can find a business opportunity with a low startup cost, like for example, e-commerce business as they have low initial capital required. By taking the very very first baby step into the quadrant, we will be able to learn the exact same lessons but with lesser risks which will provide us with the experience that we require. The most important thing about the right side of the quadrant is not about how much money we can make within the shortest period of time but instead about how long we can stay within the quadrant so that we are able to sustain our journey towards financial freedom. Once we are able to generate and sustain consistent income in the B or the I quadrant, we are then able to completely shift from the left side of the quadrant to the right side of the quadrant, leaving our 9 to 5 job. We will definitely experience failure on this journey towards financial freedom. However, we should not fear it but hate it so that we are able to learn from experience and try again and again until we succeed. Kiyosaki's rich dad often told him, you can always quit, so why quit now? Be patient and work hard on this journey towards financial education. As long as you are constantly investing in your education and you trust yourself as well as the process, success will eventually come before you. Always remember this quote. Long-term financial success is measured in the number of steps, in which direction you are moving and in number of years. In addition to the three main steps, let me provide you with two tips and tricks that can help with your transition into the B quadrant. The first tip will be to properly market yourself and your services. Let me ask you this. Can you make a better burger than McDonald's? The world today is as harsh as it gets. You can make the best burger in the world, but nobody is going to buy it from you if they don't even know that you make burgers in the first place. There are many factors as to how McDonald's achieves such a successful business model. However, I personally feel that the most important factor is marketing. If you are able to establish a recognizable brand name, you will then be able to drive up your sales exponentially. Let me just give my personal example. I actually wanted to name this channel under my personal name, which is Teo Zi Sen. But imagine going to your friends and saying, Hey, do you watch the latest Kyo Tzu video? Rather than Hey, do you watch the latest Nasty Dynasty video? 
Which one is more catchy? Now let's move on to the second tip, which is to choose your social circle wisely. If you want to transition into the B quadrant, we should mix around with people who are already in a B quadrant. This can be done either by making new friends or finding a mentor. By being around like-minded people, we will be able to discuss similar topics that can help us to improve and develop. In addition, they will also motivate you to not give up because they have already achieved what you want to achieve. Hey, but don't get me wrong, we can still mix around with E's and S's. Just that, the things they say and the things that we want to hear are completely different because our mindset when it comes to financial education is fundamentally different. They will want us to give up and pursue job security. As such, we have to ensure that we take the right advice from the right people as well as being able to differentiate between facts and opinions. With that, I have covered the pros and cons of the four cash flow quadrants as well as the importance of be, do, have, followed by how to take your first baby step I hope that through this video, all of you know where you currently lie in the cash flow quadrant and where you would like to venture into during the next two years. Always remember to first have a goal, then educate yourself to take the necessary correct steps to reach your goal. It is completely normal and even recommended to start small because the first step is definitely the hardest and the most important step. For those who are really seeking a change in their current lifestyle and trying to pursue a higher level of financial education, I would definitely recommend giving this book a read so that you are able to have your own insights and reflections. I hope that all of you have learned a bit about the game of money and are more motivated to improve your financial education so that we can all escape the rat race. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next Monday. Always remember, stay nasty.